starting next week. It's a two-week series. I believe that this two-week series will change people's lives forever. We're gonna teach you how to study the Word of God. So many people are like, I, I open it, I don't fully understand, I don't know what I'm reading. Other people, they go, what I do is I just kind of go, God, what do you want to speak to me? And then you point to it and it makes no sense whatsoever. It's the Word of God that brings lasting change into our heart. The Word of God is what we live by. It's the Word of God that guides us and leads us. So many Christians are missing the most valuable part of Christianity. And that's God's word. So I want to encourage you, if any two weeks you don't miss, don't miss the next two weeks as we teach how to read the Bible. So the mission trip is coming up. If you look inside of your weekend guide, we need your help. We're having a barbecue fundraiser. Please, there's only about 300 tickets that are left, so make sure you get the, it's amazing. Even for $10, it's a lot cheaper than Sunday's barbecue. And you're sending people on the mission field. So I think that's a wonderful thing. But we, we need your help in an offering as well. I want to just give you something that happened a couple of weeks ago. We had a secular event that we rented to an organization. They had about 1,500 people that were here. While they were here, we had teenagers that were selling bottles of water for a dollar each to help them because they're going on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic in July. The leader of the group was so challenged by seeing these teenagers working so hard, he got in front of everyone and said, I want to do something. I think we can do something to help this group out. He raised $8,000 for the Dominican Republic mission trip. So here we are, the church. We're the church. We're either goers or we're senders. I don't know about you. I want to be a sender. We need help. A lot of our team hasn't fully raised their money, but we also, in our trip to Nicaragua, we want to bless the town that we built the centers in so that we can bring items that are going to bless them ongoing. Their Grenada trip is going to help purchase a lot of the medications. This Grenada trip, I've since seen some pictures. They're going to be in the most serious of conditions, life-saving. They're going to see over 3,000 people that week. They're going to be saving arms. They're going to be saving legs. It's amazing what's going to be happening. So on the weekend guide, if you just Google on, or you just put on that QR code, it'll take you right to the app. I'm going to lead the way. So it's not to brag. It's just like, if I'm challenging you to do something, I'm going to do something. So I personally am going to get $500 to help our mission teams go. And so I don't know about you, church. I say, let's go. Let's do this. You're an amazing people. Countryside, I got to tell you. I look around in this room, and I want you to know, as you look around in this room, first service actually had more people than this. God's moving in us and through us. When I say we're the light of the world, it's obvious that as you're going into your world, you're inviting people, you're shining the light of Jesus, and your impact on this community is enormous. So I commend you. I'm blessed by you. I'm honored to stand with you, and I believe that the best is yet to come for Countryside Christian Church. Can you say amen? <laughs> this is the final week of a series that we've called Level Up. Level Up. Are we gonna keep doing the same things we do year after year? Or is this gonna be the year that I'm going to level up and get to the next level in every area of my life as I begin to train my body, train my mind, train my spirit to follow God fully and to be all that God's called us to be? If you missed any of the weeks, I want to encourage you, go back online and watch them. Because I believe that this, this series is putting us in a trajectory of growth spiritually. The word that God gave me for the year is faith. This is going to be a year of faith building. This is going to be a year that we pray big prayers. This is going to be a year we stand in faith. This is going to be a year that your faith is going to grow and exceed where you've been in the past. But it's up to us to level up. So, have you ever stopped to think... Where will I be five years from now? What will your life look? What would it look like five years based on what you do, based on how you live, based on the disciplines in your life, the things that are most important, because the next five years are gonna be determined by what you do right now. And so there are four big categories that quickly I want to go over that are going to determine some of the most important things in your life, in your life now, but also in your life in the future. 
So the first category I wanna ask you, based on the trajectory of your disciplines in your life, where will you be spiritually in five years? Are you on a trajectory where you're growing? Are you hungry for God? Do you come to church looking to be fed and excited and you're on time for worship? That's a joke just for some of the second service. Do you feel like you're growing closer to God? Is God using you in ways that you've never seen him use you? Do you find yourself praying more, seeking closer to God in your relationship and becoming more like Jesus? Because if that's where you are right now, I can't wait to see the spiritual giants that are gonna come and develop over the next five years. Because what you do spiritually today is going to determine how you are spiritually in the future. For some people, it may be the other side where, you know, church can be hit and miss as long as the bucks aren't playing, as long as I didn't stay out too late on Saturday night. Maybe you feel yourself, you know, maybe here we are, It's the end of January. I'm not as excited as I was two weeks ago. I made it through National Quitters Day on January 12th, but uh, you know, it's just getting to be a little bit of a challenge. And maybe you find yourself spiritually starting to drift into the same patterns that you've seen for a lot of your life. You see, you're never going to drift into a stronger relationship with God. It's going to be training. Remember, we're not trying. We're training. We're training to be more like Jesus. We're training to have God's word in our heart. We're training to live a life of righteousness before him. But if you're not doing the things you need to do, maybe you find yourself spiritually apathetic or maybe even in a place where you're lukewarm. So based on the disciplines you live daily, spiritually, where do you see yourself five years from now? The second area I wanna talk about is relationally. Based on how you're living your life relationally right now, what are your relationships gonna look like five years from now? Who are your friends? Who are you spending time with? Are you with people that are iron sharpening iron, your scripture says? Are you in relationships and friendships where God is the center of the friendship and God's leading you and guiding you? Maybe in your dating relationships, are you on the same page? Are you unequally yoked? You see, all of those things matter. Maybe you're around people that aren't on a good influence in your life. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. Maybe you're around people that are dragging you down. You say, hey, I'm going to church. They're like, ah, oh, who needs that? Or maybe you talk about the Lord and they're like, I don't want to hear your God stuff. See, as iron sharpens iron, friends are to be in our life to make us better, to make us stronger. So if you're in relationships and friendships that are drawing you and dragging you down, I would say, where will you be friendship-wise five years from now? What about your marriage? What are you doing in your marriage to make your marriage stronger? Are you growing together spiritually? Are you having a plan to be together? See, Elaine and I, we didn't drift into 34 years of excellent marriage where we love each other now more than we've ever loved each other. It it wasn't by chance. Elaine's an extrovert. I'm an introvert. So let me share you the difference between relationships. So Elaine is energized by being around people all the time. So when she comes home on a Sunday, she's like, whoa, praise the Lord. I was, oh, she wants to talk about it sometimes. As an introvert, an introvert energizes themselves by being alone. And so she comes home excited. I go home and I leave my dress shoes on. I leave my jacket and I crash on the couch sometimes for three or four hours without blinking. But you see, we understand the differences in our relationships and I can't allow me being an introvert to interfere with her needs and her love languages. Her love language is quality time. Quality time is number five on my love language out of five. So what do we do? We have to be very intentionally focusing on one another to meet each other's needs so that we're growing together. We're doing things that make our marriage better. We look at each other and we hopefully, as husband and wife, we're making each other as individuals stronger and closer to the Lord. But then there's some people, maybe you're struggling in your marriage. 
Maybe you found yourself in a place where you, you feel lukewarm in the marriage and it's just not exciting you and you feel like you have nothing to talk about. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and you see a couple and they're both staring away from each other on their phones the entire time they're eating? See, that, that can happen without a focused, disciplined life towards making your marriage strong. The third area is financially. How are you doing? How are you doing financially? Based on what you're doing right now and your disciplines that you're living with in your financial life, are you getting out of debt or are you getting into more debt? Are you living um, beneath your means or are you living above your means? Are you living with financial margin or are you living where you're always trying to catch up? Because number one thing that is the highest stress level for anyone is financial pressure. Marriages that meet with me. Number one reason why they divorce is because they can't take the financial pressure. So going into the next five years, are you having a plan where you're gonna get out of debt? You're gonna live financially free. You're gonna be able to pay things off and you're gonna live under what you can possibly do because what you do now is what's gonna determine financially where you're going to be in five years. The last area is physically. Are you gonna be better physically than you are now in five years based upon the way that you live your life, based upon how you live physically with your body, what you put inside of your body? Do you realize that five years from now, now I'm, I'm 58, so some of y'all say, well, I'm getting close to that. But five years from now, you can actually have more energy than you have right now. Based on what you do, based on what you put your body in, based on what you um, discipline yourself to do, Five years ago, I was eating all the wrong things. I was drinking all the soda. I was all carbohydrated up. I had a brain fob. I was exhausted all the time. Now, five years later, because I made some changes, it made an enormous difference in my life physically. So five years from now, based on how you treat your body, the temple of the Holy Spirit, where will you be five years from now? Think about your life, what it's going to look like Many of the things are beyond our control. There are, there are things and circumstances. There's things that can happen. There can be sicknesses or things that we can't control. But we can pretty accurately predict with a high degree of accuracy what your life will look like, number one, by this. The habits you have today will shape who you will become tomorrow. So people are like, hey, I really have this goal. I really want, well, what are you doing? What are the disciplines in your life and the choices that you're making every single day that's going to lead over time to be right where you want to be in the future? So if you look at your life today, five years earlier, you're a product of what the previous five years had led you to be right now. See, I heard someone say this way. They said that when you're born, you you usually look like your parents. Some way, oh, I got their eyes, I got their mouth, I got their lips. But when you die, you look like your habits. So when you're born, you look like your parents, but when we die, we look like our habits. The habits that you have today will shape who you're gonna become tomorrow. The way you look now are based on the last five years. What you're gonna look like in the future is based on what you're doing now and in the next five years. So do you like the direction that your habits are taking you? You see, intentions don't determine direction. Actions do. So you can get up and say, man, all right, today, I just, man, I, 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 I'm gonna pray today later on. I'm gonna get in the word later on. I'm gonna work out later on. And at the end of the day, you don't do any of those things. Intentions will never determine the outcome of your life, but it's the actions you put behind the intentions that will absolutely change your life forever. Can you say amen? All right, how many are ready to get into God's word? Hold the, hold the Bible up. Father, anoint this word. This is an important one today. Anoint my mouth to speak and give us a heart to listen. It's your word that changes us. In Jesus' name, amen. Galatians chapter six, starting in verse seven, it says this. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps 
what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So let us not grow weary in doing good, for in a proper time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Don't be deceived. Paul's talking here, and he's saying, don't be deceived. Don't allow yourselves to stray away from God. In fact, if it's translated correctly, he says, don't be stupid. God cannot be mocked. Paul's words are strong here. They're direct here because they're so important to what our future is going to look like. There are extreme differences that he's putting before us in this section of scripture. It's your flesh, which equals destruction and death, or you're feeding your spirit and you're sowing into your spirit, which will reap eternal life and righteousness. Sounds pretty heavy, doesn't it? You know why it sounds heavy? Because it is heavy. The enemy wants us to walk around with blinders in our eyes and miss the direction of what God has called us to do and who God's called us to be. If you don't like the direction of your habits are taking you, what are you gonna do to change those habits to get to the place you wanna be? You see, you reap what you sow. Do you have the harvest that is coming? It's coming, it's coming because of the seeds that you're sowing. You see, there's a law of, of sowing and reaping. It's a law. It's always going to come true. Absolutely every time, that is a law from Scripture of sowing and reaping. Just like the law of gravity. When I trip, guess what? I fall down because of the law of gravity. For me, it's a long way down. And at this point in my life, I could break a hip because of the law of gravity. I never fall up. I fall down. So today I want to look at the direction of our lives based on the habits that we're living our life by. And I want to give you three laws of sowing and reaping. We're going to talk about what you reap, what you sow. You reap more than you sow and you reap after you sow. So number one, let's look at this together. You reap what you sow. You can't plant an apple tree and just pray over that apple tree plant and the seed that is going to grow to turn into a tomato plant. It's not going to turn into a grape vine. It's going to turn out into an apple tree because you're sowing a seed that's an apple tree. You can plant godly habits and you will reap, reap godly outcome. But the same is also true. When you're constantly planting into your fleshly sinful desires, guess what's going to happen? The law of sowing and reaping, it will turn around and come back with destruction and hurt and evil. Hosea chapter 10, verse 13 says, but you planted wickedness and you've reaped evil. You see, you can't go to work and be late every day give a half-hearted response to what's in front of you, have a bad attitude that nobody wants to be around you and expect to be promoted. It doesn't work that way. If that's the seed that you're planting, more than likely it's a seed that's gonna bring an outcome of being let go or being put in some area that you don't affect other people. But it's also the same thing if, if you complain. Have you ever been somewhere around someone that all they do is complain? It's always something negative. It's like, oh my goodness. When I see those people coming, I'm like, oh, I shut my window in my office. I turn it from green to red, knock. Nobody wants to be around somebody that's constantly complaining because they're sowing seeds of a heart of complaining. I don't want to be around somebody that's gossiping all the time. Seeds of gossip and negativity about other people. You know what I've done to correct that? So when someone gossips to me about somebody else, I'm like, oh my goodness. They go, can you just pray about it? And I'm like, let's go one step further. Let's just go right up to that person and tell them how you're feeling. And guess what happens? They never want to go to me again. I don't like gossip. Negative seeds of gossip. Then what will happen is people will gossip about you because it comes full circle. If you sow seeds of lust, and you, you're sowing seeds of looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. Don't be surprised that you're going to struggle with intimacy in your marriage because it's a law. What you sow 
is what you reap. If you feel like I can eat anything I want to eat, never exercise, drink a six pack of beer every night, guess what? When you look in the mirror, you're probably not going to see a six pack right here. It's a law. It's what's going to happen. You see, it's not a punishment that God's giving you. It's a harvest. It's a result of what you've planted. So if you don't like what you're reaping, change what you're sowing. If you don't like what you're reaping and you see what's happening and you don't like what's coming your way, look at what you're sowing and change that and allow God to bring the harvest that deeply is inside of you, your greatest desire to reap godliness and righteousness. So number one, you reap what you sow. Number two, you reap more than you sow. What you sow, God always multiplies. Mark chapter four, verse 20. It says, and the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 times as much as they planted. You plant a tree, guess what? That tree is gonna produce many more seeds, which will produce many more trees. You reap more than you sow. If you sow kindness and you sow care, what will happen is it will come around and people will treat you more kindly. I tell you what, I love being at the front door where I get to shake many of your hands and I get to show kindness to you as you walk in these doors. A lot of you, I know your name. A lot of you, I love your hair. A lot of you, I compliment your shirt. But guess what? I'm sowing that kindness, but you have no idea how much I'm reaping back from you. You have no idea. The kindness that you show me so far exceeds anything that I'm showing to you. It's a harvest. It's a law. That's what happens. If you sow seeds of unforgiveness and anger, what will happen? You'll have a heart and your harvest will be a heart of bitterness and a hardness of heart. And let me tell you, that's the right where the enemy wants you to be. If you can get bitter, allow unforgiveness to hold you back, you will not reap the harvest that God has for you. So there's a book that was written by Darren Hardy. It's called The Compact, The Compound Effect. And in this book, the big idea that he shares is this. Small, smart choices plus consistency plus time equals a radical difference. There's a lot of you are like, Pastor Glenn, this year I need a radical difference in my life. I'm tired of it turning out the same way year after year. Well then listen, small, smart choices plus consistency plus time equals a radical difference. In his book, he uses the same man And he uses two different scenarios based on the disciplines in his life to have two drastically different outcomes. So it's called the 125 calorie difference. Now I'm gonna take it and give you more of a spiritual spin because I'm a spiritual dude. And you're in church. And we're about spiritual transformation in this place. Can you say amen? So I'm gonna talk about someone who's been consistent in church and consistent spiritually versus someone that is inconsistent. So the inconsistent one, you know what? It's the end of January. Mm, maybe I'll start going every other week. Maybe I'll start going once a, once a month. I'm, I'm gonna wake up late because I'm tired in the morning. I stay up late at night. He drinks a glass of wine every night, but he, he feels like, you know what? It's time for me to add a second glass of, of wine and that's 125 calories extra. And he feels himself, because of his inconsistency in every area of his life, he feels the intimacy with God is gone. He finds himself looking at things he shouldn't look at in, in, um, online. And it puts him into a place where he feels completely disconnected from God. The second scenario is someone that says, this year will be different for me spiritually. You're faithful in church. You're seeking after God. Some of you are in Pastor Tim's Bible study. Look at you. 
and you're connecting in a group and you're finding yourself growing. Next thing you know, you're like, you know what? I'm going to serve. I want to be part of the church. I want to be part of the life of the church. I'm going to go to bed early so I can get up early and get on my face with God. And what they find is they get closer to God. They're not tempted by the things they were once tempted by. They read the Bible and they fill their heart with the things that will reap righteousness. So with these two scenarios, there's not a noticeable difference. So within six months, it seems about the same, nine months, starting to feel a little bit different after 14 months. But just after two years, the inconsistent guy, he feels guilty and quits everything he was doing for the glory of God. He's added that extra glass of wine, which is 125 calories, which over a 27-month period is 117,000 more calories of intake. He gains 33.5 pounds, feels distant from God, loses his confidence, struggles at work. He's overlooked for a promotion, adds the financial pressure and not able to do the things that they need to do. He finds himself watching things. He gets caught watching things by his wife, and now he's at a place he doesn't know what's going to happen. And then there's the other side, the church consistency, serving God, working on getting closer to God, realizing that we're not trying, we're training. And then in fact, he says, you know what? I don't even need that one, that one glass of wine. So he cuts back 125 calories. And what he does, he loses 33.5 pounds in that 27 month period. He's training to be close to God. His confidence is growing. He's promoted at work. He now is living within his means. He's saving money instead of spending money. He has a heart of generosity and ends up going on the dream vacation his wife always wanted to go on. His marriage is more intimate, growing, spiritually connecting, all because consistency. You see, some of that was subjective because I'm a pastor. I added some spiritual things there. But the weight is not. 67 pound difference based on 125 calories. See, it's not, what, it's not just what you do occasionally, it, but it's what you do consistently. It's not what you do with your habits and your disciplines occasionally, because occasionally it's not gonna make a lasting difference in your life. It's what you do day in and day out. You don't like what you're reaping today? Change what you're sowing. Because when you sow, the Bible promises, you will reap what you sow. Can you say amen? So number three, you reap after you sow. You reap in a different season. You see, you plant maybe in the fall, you reap in the spring. But why do we get so discouraged when we don't see the progress happening right away? I want to see a harvest tomorrow for something I do today. That's just not the reality. I prayed five straight days during this fast and I feel nothing. Listen, I used to go to the gym every year. I did for like a week. And I can remember every time I'd go, I'd have these super intentions. In fact, one time I worked out so hard, my brother had to carry me out because I fainted. <laughs> but after working out for a couple of weeks, I'd always get on the scale. I'm like, man, I'd look in the mirror. I'm like, man, there's not really nothing happening here. And then I would find myself after a couple of weeks doing what everybody else does and quit on National Quitters Day. And guess what? I didn't see the results because results are not always going to be right away. We live in a microwave generation. We want it now. You go through a drive-thru and you're sitting for more than five minutes, you're mad. And you're going up to the person, give them, there's a hope card, and you're like, come on, hurry up with my food. But you see, some of you say, well, this is the year I'm getting out of debt and I'm gonna stop drinking Starbucks. It's overpriced. And after a month, you save $100 from your normal budget. But then you look at your student debt and it goes from $27,500 to $27,400. And you're like, I just can't get anywhere. How am I gonna ever get ahead? See, then often we come to the conclusion that the small decisions don't matter that much. But they do. Our lives are the sum total of all the decisions that we make day in 
and day out. You look at your life, you look at every area of your life, your life is in the place of all the decisions that have come together to bring you to this point. You see, in every action that we take, you're choosing a direction with your life. It's not the intention that makes you who you are. It's the habits in your life that will make you who you are and who you want to become. So let me ask you, who do you want to become? What's your goal? What's your heart? What is the harvest that you're looking for? What habit do you need to start today to reach what God has for you in the future? What habit do you need to stop today? Because we're training we're not trying. We're training to be more like Jesus. We're training to get God's heart inside of us. We're training to have the word of God coming in us, but yet then coming out of us as well. See, my success isn't based on the harvest. Some people go, if I just get to that dream, if I could just reach that goal, then I'll be happy. But you see, here's something to live by. We don't judge the success of the day by the harvest we reap, but by the seeds that we sow. We, don't drive, we do not judge the success of the day by the harvest we reap, but by the seeds that we sow. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. You reap what you sow. You reap more than you sow. You reap after you sow. But your consistency to honor God with your choices every single day is what's gonna bring you long-term joy, happiness, and intimacy with God. It's your hard work, your disciplines, your sacrifices, your faithfulness is going to bring a harvest that will be absolutely life changing. You see, when you have a pot of water and you put it over heat and you turn that heat all the way up, it may start at 80 degrees and then it's, then it's 140 degrees and then it gets to 205. Oh my goodness, it gets to 211. Guess what you have then? A hot pot of water. But when you get to 212 degrees, that water begins to boil and then it can accomplish what you need to accomplish. When you live consistently making God choices, you will honor God and God will honor you with the harvest. Boiling. It's not an overnight success that's gonna make you happy. Some people say, well, you, you're just lucky. You were raised in the right family. No, 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 no. We're not lucky. We're faithful. We're consistent. See, what they don't see is you're overcoming self-doubt when you're serving God. When you're praying and you're fasting and you're seeking God, you're depending on him, not upon your own abilities and your own flesh. When you fail, you get back up and you get back into where you're going with God. You get up in the morning, you endure criticism. Let me tell you, as a Christian, you will endure criticism, but you don't quit. You get back up and you live the life that God's called you to live. You see, it's the small, consistent differences that's gonna radically change your life forever. See, the things that no one sees is what brings the results that everyone once. Church, hear me. Hear me, hear me, hear me. I'm getting fired up at the end of this message. Hear me. Don't give up. Don't stop planting. Don't stop sowing. Don't stop believing. Don't stop renewing your mind. Don't stop turning back to God when you fail. Don't grow weary in doing good. For in the proper time, you will reap a harvest if, everyone say if, if you don't give up. It's not easy. It's not gonna happen overnight, but you will, it's a promise of God, reap a harvest of righteousness for the glory of God if you don't give up. So don't ever stop. Don't ever stop giving. Don't ever stop sowing. Do not ever stop seeking the face of God because you know what? When we were born, we looked like our mom and dad, but when we die, we're gonna look exactly like the habits that we lived. Galatians chapter six, verse nine. Let us not grow weary in doing good. At the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Now, let me get down here so I can see your eyes. That's my testimony. 
that's, that's my name in Lane's testimony. People, they come and they see, well, you're on the big stage. Well, you had the, no. Yeah, I'm the lead pastor of this church, which is the most incredible honor that there is. But I haven't always been the pastor of this church. I served in the nursery with my wife for five years. We were just faithful. We just kept showing up. Parents were so thankful. Kids were hanging on to my leg. Divorced kids, the boys were just like, like, man, five years. We didn't quit. There were some days where like, man, these kids are driving us nuts. But we didn't quit. We served with the middle school for eight years. Let that sink in. For you parents, you only have about six years with your middle schoolers, four years, three years, eight years. Did we want to quit? Sometimes we got weary, but God always encouraged us, do not quit. 12 years with the high schoolers. Listen, this church is 43 years old. Guess how long I've been a part of Countryside? 43 years. The whole key, here's the thing. After 43 years, we, we keep showing up. We don't quit. Were there seasons in a 43 year history that was difficult in this church? Absolutely. We were pursued by four of the largest churches in America to leave here, to go there, and God said, no, you will remain where I've called you to be planted. So, you don't quit. And now, church, now, my goodness, now, 2023 was the greatest year of harvest that Countryside Christian Church has ever had under my ministry. You can look around and see what God's doing. If I would have quit, if I would have given up, I would have missed all that God had with all of those years of sowing, but I didn't quit. I wanna encourage you, you may get tired, you may get weary, don't give up. No matter what your circumstances may look like, no matter what the people around you are saying, no matter what's happening in your home, with your kids, with your family, don't give up, stay faithful, keep showing up. Well, I don't feel like going to my group. Your group needs you, you keep showing up. And when you show up, you grow. And when you keep sowing seeds of righteousness, the righteousness that God brings inside of your life will radically change your life forever. So I speak this over you, countryside. What your life is gonna look like over the next five years, when you sow into righteousness, into godliness, you will be radically changed by the spirituality of God and your spiritual transformation will bring a lifetime of joy, peace, and what God has for you in your future. How many want more of that? Amen. Father, you see our hands and our heart. We want more of you. Less of us. We love you so much, God. Worship was so good today. As we just focus on your goodness, you're always so good to us. Your goodness never stops running after us. And your goodness is here right now to bring peace, love, and joy to the hearts of your people. With every head bowed, every eye closed before we dismiss today. Maybe you're here today. Maybe you've been sowing seeds in the wrong areas of your life, but today you're hearing about what God wants for you. But you've never surrendered, surrendered your life to him. You see, God is not one of those gods that said, well, just, you can just work yourself to this. No, it's by grace that we're saved through faith in him. We're never gonna be good enough, but God's grace is good enough. And he went to the cross for your salvation, for your sins, to give us a life of joy and abundance but we first have to surrender our heart to Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Glenn, that's what I want. I want that. I'm ready to see my life radically changed and it's gonna start by surrendering to Christ. If that's you, raise your hand when I count to three. One, two, three. Raise it up high. Yep, 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 yep. Hands all over. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Can we all pray, for the, pray together for the sake of those that raised their hands this morning? Just pray after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are. You're a good God. You're a faithful God. Today, 
I surrender my life to you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord, my Savior, my God, and truly my best friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we all stand together? Let's give the Lord a great praise offering. He's so good to us. Well, Pastor Tim is not in today, so I'm gonna be praying over you. Don't forget, barbecue tickets, get them right in the front lobby. If you've already got your ticket, go on over. If, they, if you did it online, they got your name at the table over by the student center. But let me ask you before you go today, how many want more of Jesus in every area of your life? Lord, more of you and less of us. I pray right now for every single person in this room. I pray, God, for those that are married, that you would bless their marriages. I pray for their children. I pray for their home. I pray for their neighbors. I pray for their future. As we walk out these doors today, we're walking into our mission field. Anoint us, bless us, and use us to bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. God bless you, church. Love you so much.